This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have John Jakewish, the inventor of OsteoStrong, creator of the X3 Bar PhD, and author of a book that you got to read because it basically has a philosophy that may be a little bit controversial, but weightlifting is a waste of time. There's a whole bunch of football trainers right now that I've been related to for the last 35 years that are turning in their graves. Why is weightlifting a waste of time, John? Here's here's what the book looks like right here. Uh, now, it's funny you mentioned football. There's uh, I got 12 NFL players that are uh, completely subscribed to everything I say, and they're not lifting weights anymore. Wow. Uh, so, well, it, it's not that everybody's was previously wrong. It's that there's just now a better understanding, right? Like when automobiles first came out, it was like, well, my horse never breaks down. So this is stupid. <laughs> Uh, people said that there, there was books written about it. Um, but obviously cars got more reliable and it turns out your horse does break down. It dies. So, uh, you know, or it gets dehydrated or has a muscle cramp or something. And so the idea that there might be a better way is frequently pushed away by, by people who have a tendency of being dogmatic or, being married to different ideas or ways of doing things, but there is frequently a better way. And I discovered one and I discovered one that's super convenient. And I describe it in the book, weightlifting as a waste of time. Uh, and and then, since then uh, we were just discussing before uh, switching the show on the, um, the professional athletes have really grabbed a hold of this. So the Miami heat, uh, there's an endorsement on the, on the back of the book by the Miami heat. That's a, first endorsement right there, uh, the strength coaches, and then uh, a bunch of other very influential people have signed on. Um, uh, so the whole Miami Heat team, some of the Detroit Pistons. Uh, there's there's even some players I can't mention because I don't pay anybody. Right. Uh, so, but if you, you know, search X3 and maybe like the Lakers, there might be one or two really good guys on the Lakers that use that also. <laughs> Very cool. uh, there, there may be one of the most famous quarterbacks of all time that uses it. You know, yeah. what's amazing too, is you take a step further and say that so is cardio and there's a better way to give or a better way to have the body you want. So right. what is the body you want? Well, that's, that's a great question because the, a lot of the intentions uh, I actually put a quote from Milton Friedman in the book and he's, he's not an, He's not a, you know, physical medicine guy. He's not a doctor. Uh, he's an economist. But what Milton Friedman frequently said, which I admire, is judge programs by their results, not their intentions. And uh, the, the, the reason that we ought to pay attention to that is because we don't do that. People don't do that. It's, it's about intentions, not results. And, and uh, I mean, look at like, I could say almost everything in politics would fall into violating that. Uh, that what, what Milton Friedman said. So uh, most people, when it comes to the body, most people want, they want to be as strong as possible and they want to be as lean as possible. And this is men and women. And I hear all the time, oh, I want a customized program. Oh, really? Do you want to get fatter? I don't think so. So no, you get the same program as everybody else. It's just doesn't make any sense. Uh, no, no one has differing goals. Now, every once in a while, somebody will say, I want to make my legs like, like a female say, I want to make my legs stronger, but I don't really want to work on my arms at all. Okay. You can skip the arm movements. <laughs> so, right. So, uh, there, there, there is ways to tailor it, I suppose, but somebody, the body they want, what my vision of that is, is everybody wants to be stronger, which also means more muscular and leaner. And those are also the two greatest drivers of long life. So high levels of strength and low levels of body fat are the two largest indicators that someone's going to live a long time. You know, it's amazing. You are a doctor and yet you subscribe to a very similar philosophy of mine of studying and you study what you want to study, not what people prescribe for us to study, to which I consider to be training. My oldest brother was a physician. And when I went to college, 
he said, David, make sure that you get educated, that you study and learn, don't be trained. He said, I am a doctor and I feel as if I'm well-trained, but not well-educated. And I wish I would have studied, which I came up later on in life with this philosophy of being more interested than interesting and which led to my mathematical equation of luck, which you seem to utilize all the time, which is what you pay attention to and give intention to equals the coincidences that you want in your life. Mm -hmm. Next three itself and your philosophy that led to building this different strategy was because you were studying and paying attention to and giving in, intention to something different than anyone else had ever thought of. That's right. And do you use that now um, in this ideation of expanding upon what you've done? Like, what are the things you're studying now? Uh, different <clears throat> kind of offshoots of the same thing. What can I add uh, to the advice I'm giving? You know, what's the next edition of the book going to look like? Uh, there's some different products that I've conceptualized and some of my prototype that, uh, that I'll get out there, but it, it's not like we're going to completely overhaul X3. Like it's pretty perfect. And, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be like an iPhone where there's a new one that comes out every year. That's way better. You know, no, no <laughs> it's not like that. Like I, I do see it. I see it as the ultimate statement of uh, strength and fitness not because we couldn't make it shinier, you know, next year or something like that. Um, but it also is in a nice contained package. Like it works really well. Uh, it, it's, it fits in a drawer when you're done with it. There's a lot of things it addresses that are just beyond the ultimate stimulus for muscle growth um, that it hits. So that, and that's why it's so valuable to so many people. And I think one of the greatest values, I'm a time person, I'm doing a training on time management, is the effect in 10 minutes that you can have on your body uh, and your, your fat uh, in just 10 minutes. Is that through consistent behavior? What makes, you know, it, it seems almost unbelievable when you're talking to a doctor and, you know, I obviously ran the most notable sports agency. I've dealt with some pretty significant athletes uh, and celebrities over the years. And when we're talking about taking shortcuts, a lot of the traditional leaders in this space would tell you the time you, with uh, fitness that you take shortcuts, that just means you're gonna have to get out of line, go all the way back around to the front of the line and start over. But yet you've proven with some of the biggest names in sports and doctors that it just can be done with 10 minutes a day. What makes that difference? Oh, it's a deeper level of exhaustion. So I, I tell people it's quick. I never tell people it's easy. <laughs> I, love that. I, I also noticed that people are not afraid of hard. They're afraid of long. They're, I love they're afraid that. of non commitment. So, and I see that every day. Like people just say like, God, you know, an hour a day, like I just don't have that time. And I don't even want to make that time, you know, because the next statement is, well, you got to make the time, but I don't want to. Cause like I got, if I had a free hour, I wouldn't spend it working out. I'd spend it working. <laughs> Right. Or spending time with my family or something like that. So, um, you know, I, I didn't I didn't start with the intention of making something convenient. It was going to make something that was going to be the absolute best stimulus for the body. It just so happened that it doesn't take very long to get through. So that's really where the time came from. It was kind of just that's the way the body works. You stimulate it to grow and then you let it grow. You don't you don't keep messing with it. And the, the reason people do multiple sets when they lift weights is because the stimulus is terrible. Uh, like how many sets do you, does your skin need in the sunlight before you get a suntan? <laughs> right? It's like a silly question. Like, what do you mean sets? You just go out on the 4th of July and you're outside for 10 minutes. You come back in, your skin's a little pink, then you get a tan. Well, why didn't you have to go out and then come in and let your skin rest and then go out again and then come in and let your skin rest? Why didn't you have to do that five or six times? Because that's the way we lift weights. They're both adaptive responses, same kind of thing. Wow. So why, why are we behaving one way with one thing and another way with another thing? And then let's also just look at the fitness industry in general. It's probably the most failed human endeavor. 
Like how many people work out? Males is males over 18, 23 million. Who's in shape? Like just walk down the street in the average American city or walk in the average gym. The people in the average gym don't look any different than the people in the average pizza place. Just, you know, they're not in shape. It didn't yeah. work. How, how does nutrition play into the X3 system? Because it, so many it, people say, obviously. yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't be eating pizza and gaining, like you're not turning pizza into muscle. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just, and now, I, I, you know, people don't love that piece of advice, but it's true. Okay. Um, you seem very truthful. One of the other issues is fear you were talking about earlier. And I know you and I both are friends. I think you actually have partnered with Tony Robbins, yeah. uh, who's taught me so much about the practice of ending fear, about clearing the interference or the ego-based consciousness, the, even to me, the meta-consciousness that exists within my own unconscious competency, as he would say. Uh, you have learned a lot about making decisions based on fear. Has that been applied to how this uh, X3 system works with people. So they're uh, overcoming or practicing ending that fear that somehow they can't be consistent. You know, all the different variables that are in the conscious, subconscious and unconscious mind that tell us it's much easier to sit on the couch and have a happy meal than it is to spend 10 minutes, you know, in, with true impact on, on my body. Right. Um, I find that the fear and the laziness are not really there. It, or they, they, they're they there, but in a very, very cursory way. Uh, once you show people they can, they can actually get results, because I think most people are really lazy about fitness be, because of what I j just said, uh, you know, where are the results? So many people are going to a gym and getting involved in fitness programming and they don't look any different a year later. Because there's more than just showing up and working out. There's the nutrition part, but most workouts are lousy. And that's why I talk about cardio, not, not giving us what we want. If you want to be a marathon runner, you got to run marathons. But that doesn't mean by running marathons, you're going to be lean and beautiful and look like a model. You're not. not it, it doesn't mean you're going to live longer. You know, I think... Not when, mean you're going to live longer either, right? Like, so... Um, people that, that, uh, do steady state cardio for extended periods of time, <clears throat> they will, uh, they'll chronically increase cortisol and cortisol's job is getting rid of muscle and preserving as much body fat as possible. So it keeps you fatter longer, it gives you exactly the opposite of what you think you're getting. Yeah. And the book is full of like examples like that, of like the fitness industry, completely misreading science. Uh, somebody sat on a podcast yesterday, somebody said fitness industry is misled. And I, I'm like, by saying misled, you're implying there's a leader. <laughs> they just screaming monkeys. Terrible. There's no leadership there. Like, yeah. It's amazing because you remind me of uh, Dr. Connolly who created Metrex, the original Metrex, and working and studying. Oh, that guy's cool. Yeah, bioactive, you know, dairy proteins. And, you know, when he first explained to me just the basics of American mythology of nutrition of, you know, we don't even understand <laughs> what the uh, measurement of energy means and that people will talk about calories and not understand that you, you can have the right calories or you could have very few calories and the wrong calories and gain fat uh, yeah. and not have lean muscle mass. And that, you know, these bioactive dairy proteins are extremely impactful as well. Um, if somebody's sitting here listening to us today and there's billions of dollars spent in this space and they've been through the litany of, you know, the QVCs and the online ordering and, you know, all the hype that exists with different mechanisms to be in shape. And they're at a point where they say, you know what? It's just a matter of discipline. All these programs work. If I stick to it every single day, whether it's Suzanne Summers' gig or Jay Steinfeld's gig or you know Dr. John stuff, if I do it every day, I'm going to get into shape and be healthy. What would you say to that person? I'd say no. Not all programs are created equal. Yeah, uh, there's programs you can do for years, and you won't change anything. 
And, and last question, what about the programs that are the 90 day programs, right? Yours is a program for life. Uh, it's something that you do 10 minutes a day for life, which is the most attractive thing. You know, when I started learning about fitness for me and someone said, Dave, you got to pick something, you know, minimum of an hour a day, they said to spend on my health, including meditation and nutrition planning. And, but you need to pick stuff that you're going to do the rest of your life. It can't yeah. be this 90 day program, you know, because it's just going to come back. Why, why does the 90 day program and the 30 day program sometimes set you back farther after 60 or 90 more days? Oh, uh, well, that's the exact reason I don't have, you know, that I, well, I mean, I kind of do I have a 12 week program. Uh, but yeah, very often the expectations are unreasonable. Unre you know, like someone's going to work out at home for an hour a day. Like, no, they're not. They might do that, you know, once, twice. They might do that over the course of a few weeks. Uh, you know, they really decide to give up their social life and, and go for it. But then they see the, the almost nothing results they have. So then they're like, oh, forget this. <laughs> I can't even get people to say thank you twice a day for 30 straight days. That's how far in our own way it is. Yeah. In fact, real, real quick, so I'd love to get a mindset question to you. Why do we get so far in our own way that we can't be consistent about things? What, what, what do you think it is about the, the mindset that you know, doesn't allow us to be consistent? A lot of fear-based decision-making, a, um, a lot of procrastination. I, I tell people, like there's this whole like... Um, movement of sort of pictures and memes on on uh, online that where you're looking for fitness motivation and i hate these things because there's always some picture or a group of pictures of total outliers in fitness like you know uh, this is the guy the guy is bodybuilder his name is jeremy boyandia like probably the genetics to have one of the more aesthetically pleasing physiques than ever like if somebody had carved a statue that made it look like that guy people would be like throw that statue away nobody looks that good so um you know i don't think there's anything motivating necessarily about that but what you should do is want to be a better you which is you can see that in increments and you can congratulate yourself for that over over increments and when all you have to say to yourself is, all right, I'm going to stick to my principles today. So I'm just today, I'm just not going to be a loser. I'm going to stick to my diet. I'm going to do my workout routine and, uh, you know, maybe finish reading, reading the book that I was reading. Set yourself a couple of those real simple going through the motions kind of stuff. Because when you go through the motions, things start to become automatic. And when they're automatic, you don't think about them. You just do them. Then they're habits. Yeah. And, and that and that's that's what you need. That that uh, discipline. So somebody every day can go and get something done that they need to, uh, driving them towards their goals. But they only have to make one decision. Just don't be a loser today. Because <laughs> the next day, they got to make that same decision. Say, you know, when I go to bed tonight. Do I want to be a loser or do I want to have stuck to my principles? That's another huge thing I teach. Well, I love the questions that you raise. The book is called the new book here in August. Weightlifting is a waste of time. So is cardio. And there is a better way to have the body you want. Not everybody is naturally beautiful. Like Adrian Peterson, who's a good friend of mine, who when I'm with him, he takes his shirt off. He's eating Popeye's fried chicken with a big dip in his mouth. And I'm like, how the heck do you have that body uh, in breaking every rule of nutrition? Uh, it has to be genetic. Anyway, thank you so much for dispelling the myths and allowing people to empower themselves. Please, if you're going to have a takeaway from John, it has to be, don't be a loser today. And definitely read weightlifting is, not, <laughs> is a waste of time. I love that, man. You can find it anywhere. This is Dave Meltzer with the incredible John Jetquish here on Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.